Welcome. So what I'd like to do is talk to you about the definition of the inverse in SIRS inverse definition of the sine inverse function. All right, so when talking about the sine inverse function, what we're going to say is if y equals the sine inverse of x, that is going to be true if and only if the sine of y equals x. So when we talk about functions, you know, when we're given a function and or even just an equation, y equals something, something of x, to find the inverse, algebraically what we do is we'd swap the x and y's and then solve for y. Now when dealing with the sine function, that becomes a little difficult because you know we don't what is our what is our operation that's gonna undo you know the sine function? Well, that is what we call the inverse sine function. And to get a little bit better idea of you know what the inverse sine function is, we'll we'll talk a little bit about you know how that's going to apply in real problems. But what I'd like to do is kind of look at the graph of the sine function and show you kind of how the inverse sine function is gonna take a look. So the first thing we can do is graph exactly what the sine function is going to look like. So remember the sine function is originally has a, uh, a range of positive 1 to negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. And when graphing the initial period, we know that uh, when graphing the initial period, it goes up to its max, comes back down at pi, goes back down to its minimum at 3 pi over 2, and then comes back, completes one whole cycle at 2 pi. And then it also goes in this negative direction here. Okay. Now, when talking about graphing the inverse of a function, what we looked at graphically is we are going to reflect the graph about the x, y line. And when we go and do that with the sine function, sometimes that gets get a little difficult because remember the sine function goes on and on forever in the positive and negative direction. So when you're going to think about looking at this graph and reflecting it over this x, y line, it's now going to be a graph going vertical. So to kind of get an idea of how we can graph that, remember that when graphing a function, we have x and y coordinates. So like this coordinate is pi halves comma 1. Here we have 0, 0. Over here we have negative 1 comma pi halves. Now what we're going to do is when I'm looking at the graph of the, the sine function, I'm going to now be reflecting this over the xy line. And what I want to do is kind of see you know, what exactly this graph is going to look like. So if I reflect my x and y coordinates, all right, rather than having a point negative 1 pi halves, I'm now going to have a point at pi halves comma negative, oh, I'm sorry, at pi halves comma negative 1. And then now I'm going to, um, that's a negative pi halves, I'm sorry. And then I'm going to have a point at, so I have negative pi halves, negative 1. And then I have another point at pi halves up to 1. All right. Now these are just going with these two points as I'm going to reflect them. And when looking at my graph and for the reflection, to reflect over this line, this xy line, my graph is now going to take somewhat a shape of something like this. All right. Now remember, this graph goes on and on forever. So if I was going to continue this graph, right, it'd be something like this going on and on forever. But I continue with a dotted line because when dealing with the inverse sine function, we're not going to include this dotted line. And the whole reason being is if we include the rest of this function, therefore my inverse sine function will not be actually a function because it will fail the vertical line test. So when dealing with graphing the inverse sine function, we restrict the domain. I'm sorry, we restrict the range. The domain of this function we say is going to be between negative pi halves and pi halves. Or you could say negative pi halves is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to pi halves. Now the range, so you can think over here, the, the domain of this is all real numbers, right? Because it's infinite goes positive, infinite goes negative. And the range is between negative 1 and 1. However, our, when we swap the domain and range, or swap our graph, our, even though our x and y coordinates are going to swap, the domain and range cannot. Our domain is now going between negative pi halves and pi halves, and our range is now going to be between negative 1 and 1. Because if my graph was going to continue below negative 1 or above positive 1, it would now no longer be a function, again, failing the vertical line test. So we could say negative 1 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's just kind of a quick little introductory of dealing with the definition of the inverse sine function. Thanks.